What's going on, guys? Welcome to uh, episode two of this year's contest prep series. So first and foremost, if you did check out the first one, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, be sure to go check that out. Right now, I'm 13 and a half weeks out. It is uh, Wednesday, June 26th, and uh, I'm at FAM Tampa here to train some chest and back today. So um, last time I sat down with my man Killian behind the lens, I was 16 weeks out. And we kind of just went through, you know, how prep is different every single time and where I am currently at from a mindset perspective. But I didn't like give you guys a physique update or anything like that. So I definitely want to do that today. Uh, show you guys where I'm at 13 and a half weeks out. Sometimes it's, it's quite interesting. Sometimes I feel behind. Sometimes I feel right on schedule. Um, but that's contest prep. Your mind plays a lot of games on you. Um, I'm currently down about 8 to 10 pounds. So uh, I started this prep at around 183-ish. And I'm currently 174-ish. I hit a low of 173. So, you know, anywhere between 8 to 10 pounds. Um, but I know I have a lot more to lose. I have at least 13 pounds to go. So uh, I'm not even halfway there. And it just gets harder. Like, it's actually been quite easy from the beginning up until now. But I'm starting to feel that prep is, is, is here. And my body is starting to take a little bit of a hit. Uh, hanger is starting to kick in. Fatigue is starting to kick in a bit and everything like that. So um, this is where it really gets more challenging. This is where I need to lock in more. Um, and I just came back from a trip in New York. I recorded some footage there. Um, I might share some of it with you. I was able to uh, meet Steve Loris, who's an IFBB Classic Physique Pro, by far one of the best physiques in the world. Um, and he gave me some tips in the locker room when it comes to posing. So that was really, really cool. But yeah, man, just uh, this prep has been quite different where it's not like I'm thinking about contest prep all day long like I have in previous preps. It's kind of just something that's getting done. I'm nailing my training. I'm nailing my nutrition. But I'm so busy with other things. I have so much more responsibility as a 29-year-old uh, compared to a 19-year-old and a 21-year-old and a 25-year-old that it really is quite different. Um, sometimes that concerns me, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, today's workout is a chest and back session. Like I said, we're basically pairing a lot of antagonist agonist supersets. So I'll do one chest movement, one back movement, one chest movement, one back movement, so on and so forth. I am going to try to uh, go through some particular exercise execution tips for you guys to take some, you know, golden nuggets from that and apply to your own training. Um, so stay tuned. I hope you like the workout and uh, we'll catch you on the inside. Cheers. All right guys, so before jumping into the workout, always gotta warm up that shoulder girdle a little bit. So I started off with uh, some resistance band, just basic internal, external rotation. Then again, some basic rows for the lats, for the upper back, and then a couple of different fly variations for every subdivision of the chest. And then I got into some dumbbell YTIs, again, just to make sure that everything in the scapula is kind of moving the way it should. All of those muscles are getting warmed up again, getting some blood in there before I start getting into some actual working movements. So that's just a super basic warm up. Um, I basically do that before every single upper body session, regardless of what I'm training. And then I'll get into my main movement. So if you don't warm up right now, I highly recommend it. It's just a really good way to prevent injury. And also some of these movements are going to strengthen some of those stabilizer muscles that you don't give a lot of direct attention to with your other primary lifts. All right. So give that a shot, guys. So for the first movement, I'm gonna be pairing cable flies with a rear delt fly. And I, I just started warming up here and I actually had the cable apparatus set a little bit too high. Um, if you looked at those previous reps, the cable was slightly above my upper arm and it wasn't really in line with the fibers of the chest that I'm trying to hit. So I'm gonna drop this down one. And that's something you guys can pay attention to. You wanna make sure that the tension and the line of pull is directly in line with the target tissue you're trying to hit. So this is going to line up a bit better and uh, you guys should be able to see that. So 
So for this first movement, we're just pairing the opposites, right? We're moving through horizontal adduction here on the cable fly. So the upper arm's coming across closer to the midline. And then on the rear delt fly, it's the same thing in the opposite direction, horizontal abduction where the arm's moving further away from the midline and I'm contracting my rear delt. On the other movements, I'm going to be more specific with pairing a specific region of the chest with a specific antagonist region of the lat. So we'll dive into that later. But for example, we're gonna pair like an incline chest press with a iliac lat pull down. So there's certain divisions of your lat and certain divisions of your pec that are paired together. And that's how all the exercises are gonna be linked today. So I'll dive into that as we get into the next exercise. So the second paired exercise that we're doing today, basically we're finally getting to our first compound movements of the day. Um, what we got is this lat pull down machine over here. Again, um, this is awesome at targeting a specific region of your lats, right? So your lats are gonna fire and contract as a whole muscle, but depending on what plane of movement you're actually pulling in, you're gonna target a different region of the lat. Because this is a vertical pull down, you're really going to target those iliac fibers of your lat. So it's literally the fibers that originate on the ilium or by your pelvis. And then they all have the same insertion point on the upper arm, right? So this pull down is going to align really, really well with those vertical fibers of the lat that again, originate on the ilium. Um, and I'm going to pair this with a hammer strength incline chest press to target the clavicular head of my pec, right? So these fibers, that originate on the clavicle. And again, all of the pec major fibers insert to the same exact region, but essentially the clavicular uh, head fibers really move this upper arm through flexion. So coming up and across your body. And then these iliac fibers of the lat pull in the opposite direction, um, essentially pulling straight down and moving your shoulder through extension, all right? So these two movements pair super, super well together and that's why I have them as a paired superset. All right guys, another quick tidbit on this lat pull down. Uh, whenever you're doing anything unilateral, always start with your weak side first. So on that last working set, started with my right side. I always start with my weak side first. That final rep moved extremely slow and was basically at true failure. I probably couldn't have gotten another rep. Um, whereas on my strong side, my left side, I matched it, I did all seven reps, and that last rep wasn't nearly as hard, but I used my weak side first to allow that to determine the appropriate load for that given rep range that I'm trying to work within to be within that appropriate intensity range. So um, if I started with my strong side and I tried to do it with my, my weak side and match that, um, your form's either gonna break down, you're gonna use shitty form just to try to match your reps or you're not gonna be able to. So, Start with your weak side first and allow that to play catch up over time rather than you know using your strong side first and then not being able to execute the movement properly on your weaker side. Third paired movements that I just did was essentially a dumbbell flat press, which is gonna focus on the sternal portion of my pec major. And then uh, essentially I just did a seated cable row with certain form and a certain grip that is really going to target the lumbar fibers of my lat, okay? So 
I can use these handles and pull in all sorts of directions with different intent, and it's gonna target different regions. Your back is a very complex muscle group, so anytime you do any sort of pull, you will train your back, but depending on what muscle you're trying to target within your back, you have to do it with an intention uh, to properly target what you're trying to hit. So the way I performed this, I was really thinking about driving my elbows down and almost scraping the floor with my elbow as I was rowing back. That's really gonna keep tension on those lumbar fibers of the lat, okay? So give that a shot. I paired those two together. I got one more paired set, and then I'll finish with some metabolic work, and then the session's gonna be a wrap. So we're almost there. We'll get into some posing afterwards, and that's gonna be it, guys. guys, so it's my last paired uh, compound movements, essentially, so I'm doing this hammer strength low row machine over here, and essentially what I want you guys to pay attention to is, again, the arm path. As you can see, as I'm performing this, my arm is kind of traveling in this downward angle, and then as I pull, I'm pulling back and up, and this is going to hit, like, the upper division of my lat, essentially it's called the thoracic fibers of my lat. So again, those fibers of the lat that originate on your thoracic spine. Um, so the very upper portion of my lat, but more importantly, it's also gonna hit my rhomboids and my traps really, really well. And then I'm pairing that with the opposite pushing movement, which is essentially any sort of decline press or a dip. So as I'm doing dips, I'm pushing in that same exact path as I'm pulling. So here as I'm pulling on the low row, there's a downward angle on that eccentric and an upward angle on the concentric. And then when I'm doing a dips, my arms are traveling in a similar path and it's hitting the lower division of my pecs or the costal fibers of the pecs. So everything's been paired that way. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it.